Hello guys, welcome to the 20th session of Blazor Tutorials for Beginners. In this session 11, we have seen the life cycle of Blazor component, right? So in this session, we will see the shoot render and state has changed methods of component base. I will create a component which has a label and some buttons. We will display the current time in the label when the user clicks on it. Now create a component. Display time. Add page directive. Create a property for current time. And assign the default value. Create event handler update current time. from which we will update current time again. Now add button. Click on call update current time and render display current time as long time string. Save the file and run the project. Now open display time page. Here we got the current time. Click on the button and it will update its value in UI. We don't need to do any extra stuff for this because it is automatically managed by the framework. But in certain situations, you may not want to re-render component until all changes made or wait for some time. In this scenario, we can disable this automatic UI re-rendering. Stop execution. Now create another button for toggle rendering. Create a field which will hold value for this. Should render UI changes. By default, this will be true. Create this handler. In toggle rendering, we will just need to negate the value of should render UI changes. We need to override should render and Return our flag. Now run the project. And refresh the page. Click on update button and here it's value updating in UI. So let's toggle this flag. Click on the update button again. Now it does not update. The value of property or fields in UI, but let's toggle this again and it will automatically update UI here. Now, when we click on the update button, it will update UI. In certain situations, you want to update UI while you are still processing it. This requires when an operation is time consuming or long. During operation, we can give updates in UI in which stage operation is going on. Stop project execution. Here I will create a button and click start timer to update current time value on every second. On click start timer. Here we need to use time class which resides in system threading namespace. So we need to add it for this use using directive. Create a handler. Create a timer. And specify callback for this timer.
in which we will just update the value of current time with date time. Now for this timer, we do not need to specify any state and execute this callback for every one second. Save the file and run the project. and refresh the page. Click on the start timer button. Here it does not update values in UI because we have to call state has change method. This method is defined in component based class. Now restart the project. And refresh the page. And click on the button. Here it will update values in UI2. If we click on toggle rendering button, then it will stop updating even we have called state has changed method manually. Because this method uses the flag written from should render. Let's see what we have learned in this session. Should render method specifies the flag for whether UI should be updated or not. By default, its value will be true, but we can change it by overriding this method. And state has changed method will update UI as per current state of the field and properties. It will call automatically from lifecycle methods as well as events. This method also uses should render flag internally to decide whether UI should update or not. Here is our example. We created a toggle button to update flag for rendering. Return this flag from should render method. If we want to update UI before finishing event execution, we can use state has change method. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any doubts, please feel free to contact me. Have a nice day.